Hi, I'm White Feather. I'm a bio artist currently based in Montreal and I'm here as a visiting artist in residence at Sherbrooke University with Dr. Denis Crollo. Uh, and we are working on a project together through the program at Spora Ball Centre on Art Actuel. Bonjour, je m'appelle Denis Grolot, je suis professeur chercheur à la Faculté de génie à l'Université de Sherbrooke et je suis privilégié d'être impliqué dans un projet artistico-scientifique avec White Feather. So, a huge part of art science collaboration is forming a relationship. And we've spent time together not only working in the lab uh, as collaborators, but also getting to know each other as researchers and comparing our ways of working um, with microorganisms. My approach has typically been more philosophical, whereas Denis has a very strong scientific background. So it's finding the areas of negotiation between those two approaches. That's one of the things that we've been doing. And Denis? Donc, très tôt, nous savions qu'il y aurait une période de flottement, donc il fallait se connaître. Et, mais j'ai quand même compris rapidement que White Feather avait un intérêt dans le collagène et dans le, dans le concept d'intimité qu'on retrouve dans, dans la nature. Donc, après quelques semaines de, de flottement intellectuel, euh, White Feather est arrivé avec l'idée de démarrer le projet avec des, des échantillons de sol qui provenaient d'une vieille tannerie qu'on a redécouverte dans, dans le Vieux-Montréal, plus ou moins. Et ça m'a donné un peu comme l'idée d'aller voir si on ne pourrait pas extraire des micro-organismes intéressants qui auraient une longue histoire à Montréal puis qu'on pourrait peut-être ex exploiter comme outil pour, faire, pour développer un projet scientifique autour du collagène. Et c'est comme ça que l'idée a germé. It's been interesting because we normally think of artists as working very intuitively. Um, but when I came here, when I first came here with my soil samples, um, you know, thinking that we're, we're going to jump right into a scientific approach, I discovered that Denis actually has quite a bit of intuition that he uses in his work as well. And it was his random suggestion that I spit into a Petri dish and we include saliva cultures with the soil sample cultures. And the results were extremely surprising, in fact. And in the end, we found out that uh, they also feed into our idea of bacto intimacy and intimacy in general, looking at intimacy between humans and their ecologies and microecologies of microorganisms as well, the intimacy between bacteria and its substrate. So. It was interesting. Denis told me right off the bat that he's always successful in what he does. <laughs> so I don't know if there was much insecurity there. But no, it was, I think, your first time ever working with a bio artist, for sure. And so he was really interested in taking a lot of risks. And our first idea is that we were starting to develop didn't have enough risk taking for him. So I think that's where the idea of using saliva, body fluids came into the equation. Um, so now we're at the point where the science is very solid. Um, it's been, our experiments have been very successful. We, we haven't had any failures, in fact, which is extremely rare in scientific experiments. Um, so he was right. He hasn't had a failure yet. Uh, but we still have the insecurity, I guess, of how we will effectively present this research to the public within an art gallery context. So that's, I guess, where my experience will come in. But I told Denis yesterday he's still not off the hook yet. <laughs> <laughs> he has to help me sort of formulate the creative presentation a little bit. So. Donc on est parti avec euh, des gels de collagène et on a euh, finalement. Euh, au point de vue microbiologique, qu'on a favorisé je dirais, la production d'une sous-population microbienne qui, qui aimerait utiliser le collagène comme aliment. Puis après un certain nombre de, de, de semaines, on, on s'est mis à y extraire des micro-organismes. Puis rapidement, on a trouvé une belle diversité de, de micro-organismes non, non encore identifiés. 
Et là, on s'est amusé à faire des tests. Ensuite, les plus intéressants, on les a purifiés. Et récemment, on les a fait identifier. Donc, on avait huit micro-organismes présélectionnés qu'on a purifiés. On en a choisi quatre qu'on a envoyés dans un laboratoire privé en Ontario pour faire identifier. Et elles portent toutes le même nom. Donc, même si on a travaillé dans le noir pendant des mois, sans trop savoir ce qu'on manipulait, à la fin, on a vraiment... On, on allait dans la même direction. Donc, elles ont le même nom de famille, le même prénom. Et ce qui est encore plus intéressant, c'est que les échantillons qui viennent de la salive de White Fighter bien, portent le même nom que les micro-organismes qu'on a isolés du sol. Donc, il y a, il y a une espèce d'uniformité ou d'intimité entre ce qu'on retrouve dans le sol et ce qu'on retrouve dans la bouche de, de White Fighter. Donc, finalement, les, les, mêmes causes les, les mêmes causes produisent les mêmes effets. Y a t euh, un intérêt pour les scientifiques en arrière des recherches ou vraiment ça va être transféré du côté artistique? Et puis... Non, je pense que c'est une question de, de priorité, de savoir si on aurait le financement. Mais on pourrait certainement poursuivre euh, les travaux d'un point de vue scientifique parce que on a assez d'informations maintenant pour savoir que les bactéries qu'on a isolées produisent une vraie... Une, une, une vraie collagénase, donc une, une, une enzyme qui agit spécifiquement sur le collagène. Donc, on peut, donc, il y a des applications industrielles et biomédicales à faire avec ça. Okay. Si on veut poursuivre le projet. OK, OK. Ouais. Ça, c'est au niveau scientifique. Au niveau scientifique, oui, c'est ça. So, first of all, I want to clarify that as a bioartist, I'm working in a transdisciplinary fashion. So it's not like I'm just coming in here and we're doing a little bit of science with Denis and then I'm responsible for the artistic part. My practice is an integration of both, you know, the scientific and the artistic. And I think Denis was mentioning the material that we were working with. Um, the collagen, the specific collagen that we've been working with is an artistic material that I brought into the lab and we weren't sure what the results were going to be because it's it's never been used in a biology lab before um, but it had pretty amazing results so that's kind of one example of where there's a crossover between art and science that happens in the laboratory. Now in terms of communicating all of this research and presenting it to a, a public audience that expects to see artwork in the traditional form of what we think artwork is. Um, there are several strategies for presenting these works and one that Denis and I have discussed is making a participatory work. So something that the public can come in and get their hands on and experience some of that scientific process that we've been undergoing over the past several months, um, interacting with the microorganisms themselves and starting to get an appreciation for the relationship between the researcher and the microorganisms and having a better understanding of the agency of the microorganisms and the role that they play in the development of an art an artwork. Um, so we will have some hands-on stations, I guess, in the gallery where people can come in and put on a lab coat, um, conduct some experiments themselves and then come back later and see the results and to see how the enzymes have acted on the collagen, um, which is an artistic, an artistic material that we are working with in a biological research way. Um, so in order to kind of gain an appreciation for the temporal aspect of this kind of work as well, um, the possibility for failure and also you know, negotiating with things that we can't see and making those invisible things visible, I guess, which is kind of what a bioartist does. And how will you achieve that, to make those things visible? Uh, so we are turning our bacteria into microscopic sculptors, basically. Um, so the microorganisms that we've been working with secrete an enzyme that digests collagen, a collagenase. We think it's a collagenase. 
Um, so wherever those enzymes are applied to their substrate, which is the collagen, they will actually eat away in a very, well, we're going to try to make it in a very controlled manner. It sort of has a mind of its own, but we'll see what happens. The results are always a surprise. Um, but basically, it will be an evolving sculpture that happens. And so people will be able to come back and visit the gallery multiple times to see how that evolves over the duration of the exhibition. Okay. That's one of, the, okay. one of the representations that they'll be able to see. Part of our research has been looking to see if any other bioartists or, or biologists have done anything like this before, and there's nothing. Okay. Um, so in that way, we can call it innovative, I guess. And I think it's a, a first step in, in the history of, of, of art, to the of the degree, that's never been done. Normally, um, enzymes like this are used for art applications yeah. only in terms of art conservation. Yeah, for, for cleaning up. For cleaning paintings or things yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but it's a very brief action. It's stopped. Uh, it's considered to be potentially destructive to the artwork. In this case, we're using that destructive capacity of the microorganisms to create the artwork. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a new approach. Interesting. Basically what this has shown us is that this bacteria is producing uh, a very basic pH environment, which is interesting when you think that this one came from my mouth. So normally the environment of our mouths can be pretty acidic. Mm -hmm. You know, we have enzymes in there that are there to break down food and there's bacteria that's feeding on the sugars that we eat and producing an acidic environment, which is why we need to brush our teeth. Um, it may be, we can speculate, that this particular bacteria is counterbalancing that by producing a basic pH. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. There's a lot that's unknown about it, which is what's exciting about it mm -hmm. for me and, and for Dini as well, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a lot of potential applications for this that, one in particular, that I'm interested in spoofing, and uh, that is in its possible uses in the the beauty product industry okay. and I'm interested in spoofing this because um, it's very profitable profitable for biotech to you know discover uses of microorganisms that that may be used in like anti-aging products and so it's entirely plausible that an extract from my saliva can be used in an anti-aging product because of the performance of these enzymes. Um, they break down collagen, they would work as a chemical peel on a face basically. So it's, it's interesting to play with that and push that because we think of body fluids as something that we don't want to touch. Um, the same with microorganisms, our relationship with them is that we don't want to touch them, we want to be sterile, we want to wash our hands, we want to keep everything clean, but in fact body fluids and microorganisms can be really beneficial and maybe the industry can even profit off of these so it's it's a fun concept to kind of develop and that's part of what I'll be developing in the exhibition as well. We have already seen that the impact I guess of this research is going to be much more far-reaching than the parameters of this residency. Um, We've already been in conversations with some of Denise's colleagues and who are now interested in collaborating further, stemming from this research. Um, Denis has seen potential applications for some of his own research as well. So it's, it's been really valuable not only in the, the exploration phase, but also in what the wider implications will be for this research. So, Definitely we'll be able to kind of branch off and, and do more research that stems from this research. Et pour ajouter à ça, moi je m'occupe euh, du projet Intégration 1 et 2. Donc j'accueille des nouvelles cohortes d'étudiants en génie biotechnologique et je vais leur donner ce projet-là comme un des projets à développer durant l'automne et durant l'hiver. Donc ça va devenir... Euh, Je viens enrichir mon portefeuille de projets possibles pour des, pour des étudiants de première année.